arms. Get on, get on, take on, take on. What's up guys? Um, today we're just going to do a quick tutorial video on how to add new calls to your Fox Pro CS24C. In the description of this video I do have two links. One is for the Fox Pro programmer, which you will need. And the other link is for the uh, TX1000 firmware updater. Um, I recommend keeping your firmware updated. If you have a call that's got some age on it or you've never hooked it to your computer, it's always good practice to update your firmware on your controller. Um, you may gain some features um, such as the FireEye feature where you can work with the uh, Fox Pro FireEye light. It's a pretty cool feature. But uh, you're going to need a couple things such as a Phillips head screwdriver and a micro USB cord. Um, a lot of people call this uh, old technology, but this is like the same style cord that you would have for like your old Motorola Razor. Um, if you don't have one on hand, you can go to Staples and get one or Walmart. Um, but most everybody has one of these lying around in their house somewhere from an old cell phone or electronic device. Uh, they're fairly cheap if you don't have one on hand. Um, I keep mine in my bag with my call so I don't lose it. The first thing you're going to want to do is there's three screws. One up here, one down there, and one down there. What you have to do is you have to separate this from the horn. So, let's do that real quick. While I'm doing this, uh, I just want to say thank y'all for taking the time to watch my videos and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, I please ask that you do. Um, I'll be adding new content. I'm going to try to do it pretty regular. Um, Coyote hunting, deer hunting, kicks and trips, uh, yeah, tricks and tips such as this, and just random stuff such as that. Um, I'm just a normal guy like y'all, um, but when I gain knowledge, I like to spread that knowledge. Alright, so you got your three screws out, you set them in a safe place so they don't get lost, and your cap comes off the horn. Now if this is the first time you've ever done that, um, it might be kind of hard to pull the uh, cap off because it's stuck to the rubber o-ring. Just be firm with it, but don't try to tear it off or anything. Now inside of this, you will see, let's see if I can get this zoomed in here, that port right there. Point out the screwdriver. This is where you hook your USB cord. So, now that that part's done, I like to leave it laying just like that. I'll zoom it on out. Now we'll move to the computer portion. So, I already have the program downloaded. I'll kind of speed things up. It's not a very hard thing to install. Alright. So, I'll go ahead and open that. Fox Pro Programmer. And uh, I went ahead and purchased three calls to show you how everything's done. Um, when you open a program, if you've used it before, the, the, the file that you used last, quit it, will be uh, up there with the sounds. Um, what I do is I drag and drop all my new sounds to the same file. Um, I have a f folder on my desktop called Coyote Calls and I kind of keep everything broke down and organized from there. My new calls, I just put in a file called to be uploaded. So, open that up and I have my new calls. I select one and everything that's in that file goes to there. So, at this point, we need to go ahead and connect the call. So, I'll rotate this over. And I'll zoom on out. I'll take my USB cord. Plug it into the computer. Like so. Then... I will plug this into the cap, like so, just like that. Now your computer will make a chime to say, hey, you hooked something up. So go ahead and zoom this back into the computer. Um, I'm not going to do a backup right now, um, but if it's the first time you've ever done the call, uh, hooked it to the computer, go ahead and do a backup. Um, the only reason why I'm not doing it right now is because it, it does take a little bit of time. Let's see here. So I'll just skip that for now. 
Now, the three new calls, I'll select all and insert them. And they go down there to the bottom. So 226, 227, 228 are the three calls. Then I'll go up here to update caller. It don't take but a few moments because it's only three files. Let it do its thing. All right, so your update's complete. Now at this point, if you went ahead and unplugged it, you would not have the calls on your TX-1000. So you have to go a little bit further into this. So update categories, or edit categories. And you can see here I have all my categories. One thing I like to do is just go ahead and minimize all these so it's easier to see what you're doing and get an idea of what you've got going on. And uh, one thing that I took the time to do is I added more categories for certain things. Like uh, all the calls I purchased, like my boss calls, predator tactics, MFK calls. Um, I try to keep all of them separate or at least to a point where I can get to them quickly. And, you know, you can drag and order them in different orders and stuff like that to fit your needs. And also, on top of all that, I added, I broke down the coyote calls that much further. I had my howls, my pup calls, my barks, my challenges, and stuff like that. So, all that's, you know, real quick and easy to get to. Say I'm on a stand and I got a dog that's hanging up a couple hundred yards away and I want to bring him in closer. You know, I may not have a call that I want to use on my favorites list. So, I can hop into my MFK calls real fast and uh, select a call from there. But once you get to this point, you want to scroll down to where your new calls are. So, I'll scroll on down. And I have those three calls. The Bitch and Heat, Den Raid Evolution, and Den Raid 2. So, all these are Tony Tebby calls. So, all I have to do is click and drag it on over to Tony Tebby. Just like this real quick and easy and I'll verify if they are in there there they are right there and all I have to do is hit save and done the categories file has been updated alright so at this point you want to go ahead and safely remove your hardware so we'll go on over to here safely remove hardware eject mass storage device And now I can go ahead and unplug the cord from the horn, like so. Let's see if I can zoom this out so y'all can see what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and unplug that. And now at this point, you need to update your TX-1000. So pull your battery cover off, and that same cord you hook into this. Right above the batteries is a USB port, right there. All right, so I'll plug that on in. And now I'll power up the TX-1000. And you'll see, once you get it powered up, it says USB active. So you know it's communicating with your computer. So I'll go back over here to the computer. And I'll go ahead and zoom it on in. Do you wish to update the remote file and category list? Of course. Click yes, and this does not take long. That's it, simple as that. So I hit OK. And I go back to over here to safely remove hardware. And this is by far the most important part. Make sure any USB device, it doesn't have to be this, any USB device, safely remove it. Because you can cause the files to go corrupt or something like that. And when you do that, the remote cuts itself back on. I'll zoom out for you. Get her focused. And now we can go on through. Let's see here, we did Tony Tubby calls. There they are. Bitch and heat. And you can see all my files. Oh, well, categories are listed there. Really easy to get to. Nice popular stuff. <clears throat> Got my stuff in my favorites list. Everything's good to go there. And it's that simple. Now, if you update your remote and you cut it on and it's just a bunch of gibberish or your categories aren't there or it's just not working like it's supposed to um, there is a fix for that so I'll go ahead and walk you through it I'm not going to do it myself because everything's good there 
So, I close out everything on my computer, like so. And I'll go ahead and plug the USB back into the back of the remote, like so. I'll power it up. USB active. And now, what we'll do, zoom in so y'all can see. Alright, so basically you just need to format it. So here it is, right here. So I'll right click on it, and it says format. So, all you have to do is format it, and basically what it does is it wipes out everything on the controller. Then you can go back to the Fox Pro programmer and update your remote, and you'll be good to go there. So, other than that, it's pretty much uh, good to go. Y'all ready to go sit in the Coyote Woods? Um, I, I certainly appreciate all y'all checking me out, and uh, stay tuned for more content. Y'all take care.